Hi, I'm Mike. Spring is in the air and the frost is just starting to come out of the ground and the smell, well, that's the smell of spring on the ranch. Today we take a look at what causes all that smell and how we need to deal with it on a very crappy episode of our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Each and every day, a cow eats between 25 to 50 pounds of dry matter. She drinks anywhere from 10 to 30 gallons of water, and all that, well, it has to go somewhere. With a total intake between 130 to 300 pounds per day, it's no surprise that all that food and drink is turned into a great deal of poo. No matter what you call it, droppings, dung, excrement, buffalo chips, waste, manure, feces, number two, cow chips, metal muffins, or just plain shit. It's everywhere. And now is the time that we really have to start thinking about how we're gonna deal with what is piled up over the winter here on the ranch. Each and every cow here produces about 65 pounds of manure per day. That's a total of 12 tons per cow per year. Is that hard to picture? We'll try this. 12 tons is as heavy as, uh, what, an elephant. So two, two times as heavy as an elephant, actually. <laughs> and as much as eight full-sized cars. Put that in perspective, 12 tons of poop is as much as the average human will produce in their entire lifetime, about 80 years. And a cow makes number two about 15 times per day. I've heard it said that cows have two jobs, that's to eat and poop. Well, they're pretty dang good at both of them. So the big question is, what do you do with all this manure? What's it good for? And what's the best way to utilize it to its best potential? Dealing with number two is priority number one. Manure is a valuable resource on the farm and a great resource of nutrients for crop production and it can help improve soil health. When not managed properly, manure can pollute the environment, including groundwater due to excess nitrogen, phosphorus, and carbon or organic matter. Mismanaged manure can also contribute to air quality concerns, pathogens in water supplies, and pests and vermin. One way of dealing with manure on the farm is to spread it. You collect manure, you load it in a spreader, and you spread it on cropland, hayland, or pasture. This method is time consuming, but it will help improve your pastures or cropland by replacing nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and organic materials in your soil. In order to do this, you're gonna need a manure spreader and a tractor to run it. These components increase the cost of spreading manure as well, and it, it's worth noting that we only spread raw manure over areas that are intended for animal consumption, and we don't use raw materials in gardens or near them. This helps ensure that pathogens are not passed along to people. What some fail to notice is that you, if you have manure, you have livestock, and you have four-legged manure spreaders on your land that you can take advantage of and make do the work for you. The most low maintenance manure management system you can implement is one where you keep your animals moving. For some, this is impractical, but even if you only have a few acres, you can move corrals and grazing areas strategically to allow your animals to fertilize for you. Here on the ranch, we're able to do that during the winter months by changing where we feed daily. Most ranches will implement a sacrifice area during winter feeding, an area close to shelter and water where we know cows are gonna congregate. They're gonna tear up the ground in those areas and it's important that as soon as we start seeing the spring thaw, we start moving them away from the sacrifice areas as much as possible to allow the ground to begin healing itself. We start feeding farther and farther out from facilities. If a snowstorm or bad weather hits, of course we allow animals back into shelter, but for the most part, we're gonna be moving cows to start to graze and feed farther and farther from home. This is called on-pasture manure management, and it allows better use of manure nutrients as well as saving time. Overstocking is the primary cause of water quality contamination and making sure that you work with your local extension service to determine stocking rates will benefit your farm and your entire area's water supply. 
Stockpiling manure, or storing it until you need it, is another method for dealing with the waste of your animals. But it's more than just piling it up behind the barn. Rainwater will carry nutrients away and potentially pollute that groundwater and drinking water. When we store manure on the ranch, we first find a place where the soil is compacted and sealed so that rainfall doesn't leach nutrients into the soil. We utilize a method that I like to call cow paction. And we pile manure where we know that cows have compacted the soil by walking over it repeatedly. In some places, the soil becomes more like concrete. Larger ranches and farms may actually build manure stockpile areas with concrete and containment walls and even roofs to keep the manure dry. And all the manure storage areas need drainage to allow runoff to be directed through the grass for filtering. Once you have all this manure, composting is an option and chances are you're already composting in some sort of fashion on your farm. Anywhere you have manure building up, you can remove it and put it to use. Composting, when done properly, speeds, the, speeds up the breakdown of organic material into a form useful to soil, microbes, and plants. It reduces odor, harmful pathogens, and kills weed seeds. It's also much safer as a soil amendment, and it can be applied to plots where you garden vegetables, and is typically pH neutral. We will have more coming up on composting in the future videos, but here's the basic premise. Your goal is to create a balance of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and moisture through the addition of the right ingredients and regular aeration of your manure. This will create heat, and that heat will speed up the breakdown process. There are many different types of composting, including hot, warm, and cool, and several ways to do it, windrows, three bin units, and static piles. A small tractor is required to turn and move compost, but there are even ways to get around that. For example, you can use your chickens to turn it for you. And all the while, they add more and more to the pile. Another option for manure management on your farm may be to simply remove it. Maybe your livestock produces more than you can use, or you don't want to use any. This will begin with you needing a stockpiling method that we spoke of before, but also a method of removing it and hauling it away. My suggestion would be to compost it, then remove it, and make a buck while doing it at the same time. Well composted manure is valuable to gardeners, landscapers, and farmers without livestock. If your compost is weed free, even better. You can package it in old feed sacks and sell it or allow people to haul it off by the truckload for you. Put an ad on Craigslist or Facebook and ask around and see what people want. I guarantee someone will take it off your hands. And maybe you can even make enough to go out to dinner every once in a while. Just make sure you clean up a little bit first. And if you are taking your manure to the landfill, stop it. Bad farmer, no beer for you. Manure that's taken to the landfill, well, not only are the nutrients wasted, but they can leach directly into waterways and groundwater. Luckily, most trash handlers today will not accept animal waste, but there's still a chance. So there you go. Deciding how to manage your manure is a big task, and you aren't alone. Get a hold of your local USDA and NRCS offices and your university extensions. It's their job to help you. And if you're wondering if it's worth the time and effort, I'll save you the worry. It is. You'll see the benefits. You'll have better soil, better water, and a more productive farm or ranch. Thanks for coming along today. Please subscribe. We have a ton more to see, learn, and be a part of as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Until I see you again, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming Life.